the goodness of God, friends. The goodness of God and the kindness of God. Let me tell you something this morning about the goodness of God. And let me tell you this morning about the kindness of God. The goodness of God and the kindness of God never ceases, never ceases to amaze me. The goodness and the kindness of God. Have you this morning ever been surprised? Maybe to the point of being overwhelmed by some blessing you have received? A blessing that wasn't asked for, never mind prayed for. But yet it was a blessing this morning that you received. I call such a blessing this morning an out-of-the-blue blessing, a blessing that wasn't expected, a blessing that was undeserved, a blessing, let's say this this morning, a blessing that came unexplained. Have you ever been surprised or overwhelmed by some blessing you have received? A blessing unexpected? A blessing undeserved? A blessing unexplained? But you received it. You see, child of God, we're all guilty, and there's no bigger guilty party than the man standing in the pulpit, and this is what we're all guilty of this morning. How often, child of God, we're guilty of overlooking the goodness of God. I believe we're all guilty of it, and as I say, there's no bigger culprit than me. We all overlook at times the goodness of God. And we overlook so often this morning, let's call this the kindness of God. Remember what Psalm 31 verse 19 says? Psalm 31 verse 19 says, How great is thy goodness! that thou hast stored up for them that fear thee. Do you know, child of God, we think of the holiness of God, we think of the greatness of God, and we think of the faithfulness of God. But let's remember the goodness of God this morning. Psalmist could say, How great is thy goodness that thou storest up for those that fear thee. You know, child of God, did you ever sit and think of the goodness of God? Never mind the glory of God or the greatness of God, but have you ever thought this morning concerning the length of the goodness of God? For mind you, the Bible talks about the goodness of God and the length. It says in, 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 in Psalm 52 and verse 1, it says, the goodness or, or the goodness of God endureth continually. My friend, the goodness of God doesn't stop and start. The goodness of God endureth continually. The goodness of God. That's the length of the goodness of God. It continues and endures continually. But I wonder, did you ever sit and think not only of the leading concerning the goodness of God, 
uh, sorry, the length. Have you ever considered the leading of the goodness of God? Because it says in, 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 in Psalm 52 and verse 1, it says, the goodness of God leadeth thee to repent. Now, child of God, before we continue, have you ever considered this morning concerning the goodness of God in your life and the goodness of God in my life? Have you ever, this morning, child of God, not only considered the goodness of God, have you ever considered the kindness of God? Somebody mentioned the prophet Nehemiah in their prayer this morning, and in Nehemiah chapter 9, 17, Nehemiah himself said that God is a God of great kindness. Psalm 31, verse 21, it says, Blessed be the Lord who hath showed me marvelous kindness. But do you know the problem, child of God? We get so focused on the burdens of life. We do. We get so focused on the burdens of life. And because we're so focused on the burdens of life, we get filled with pity. And we can sometimes get filled with bitterness when you focus on the burdens of life. And instead, child of God, of focusing on the burdens of life, let's get focused on the blessings of life. And the blessings of life, you'll begin to fill up with praise and with blessing. The goodness and the kindness of God. I wonder this morning, child of God, is there someone here? And recently you have received some blessing. Some blessing has come into your life in some shape or some form or some way or another. And it was a blessing, child of God, you weren't expecting. It was a blessing you never even prayed for, never mind thought about or even asked for. But it was a blessing that fell into your lap. And life. God wants to speak to us this morning about a blessing that Ruth received. A blessing she didn't request. A blessing she didn't ask. But it was a blessing that was hers. My text this morning is verse 16. But look at verse 15, just to put the color into the picture. Verse 15 of Ruth 2 says, And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not. Now here's the text. Verse 16, And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them, that she may glean them and rebuke her not. That's the text this morning. And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them, that she may glean them and rebuke her not. Do you know what I learned this morning when I was before the Lord over this verse? And I began to look at verse 16, and the Lord began to open it up before me. Do you know, I could see here that this blessing that Ruth received, it was a blessing of providence. It was a blessing this morning of providence. A well-known hymn goes like this. God moves in a mysterious way His wonders to perform. And as we study this morning, and for those of you, I'm sure the majority of you know the story of Ruth, you'll find that God moved in a mysterious way in her life. 
And sometimes God moves in such a mysterious way that sometimes we cannot even find the hand of God when God begins to move. You remember how the story of Ruth begins, don't you? It was a story this morning that bereaved, that began with bereavement and loss. And she comes out of Moab, she arrives in Bethlehem, the poor wee woman, the creature that she lives, she's, she's broken by bereavement. She's penniless by poverty, and she's fearing the future. And she cannot understand, perhaps, why her world has been turned upside down. And yet in all, child of God, yet in all, God's hand was there. You see, sometimes, child of God, we forget about the sovereign providence of God that controls our lives. And sometimes things happen to us. We cannot understand why, and there's no answers. And sometimes we seek God, but there's, the heavens are silent. But Ruth comes, and Ruth comes up to Bethlehem, and she says to Naomi, Thy God shall be my God. And I want you to think, child of God, when the difficult times of life comes, and the dark times, it's so difficult to see the hand of God at times, and sometimes the hand of God is hidden by a very dark and gloomy glow. But you know, child of God, this morning, one thing we we'll learn is this. The hand that sometimes breaks is the same hand that blesses. Divine providence and sovereign providence always works for our good, even though we cannot see it. As Ruth, Ruth gleans in this field this morning, Ruth knows absolutely nothing about the decisions that Boaz was making. Behind the scenes, Boaz was, was looking upon her, and behind the scenes, Boaz was making plans that would affect the rest of her life. But while Boaz was making these plans, Ruth was oblivious to anything that was going on. She knew nothing of his plans of blessing for her. This was a concealed plan. She was to know nothing of it. She was to receive the blessing that was commanded by Boaz. You see, Boaz took note of Ruth. She took, he took notice of her. Child of God, as you and I serve the Lord in the field of grace, I want you to know this, and God wants you to know, God takes knowledge of you that you're there. And instead of being taken up with the bitternesses of life, do you know God has his blessing in store for us? Jeremiah 29, verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace not of evil, to give you an expected end. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. And you know, like Boaz, sometimes God works behind the scenes of our lives. Do you remember Joseph? In Joseph, Genesis chapter 37, you remember it was Joseph's brethren who sold him into slavery who done a very wicked and a very evil deed. But in Genesis 50, looking back then, he could say, yes, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. 
Looking back, Joseph could say that was a blessing of providence. God was at work even when we couldn't understand what was going on. But look at this wee text again. Here's the command. And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose. Here's the cause for her. Listen this morning. Poor Ruth, she was a stranger came up from the land of Moab. There was no reason as to why Boaz should show her kindness. But yet he did. And this, this morning, the blessings of the handful of purpose, they came to her by the hand of grace. Do you know, child of God, the handfuls of purpose that fall into your life comes from the hand of providence. These sheaves that fell, they were a blessing of providence. I want you to look, secondly, they were a blessing of provision because it says in the text, look at it again, and let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her and leave them. Leave them for her. You know, Boaz comes to the reapers and he says to the reapers, see that young Moabitess woman there? Yes. Do you see when you're gleaning your sheaves? Aha, uh -huh, yes. Listen, drop a few for her, will you? Drop a few for the wee Moabitess girl there. Don't be saying nothing to her. Don't be saying nothing to anybody. You, you drop them for her. And when you pack the sheaves up onto the cart and the oxen goes out through the gate there, and you know the way the oxen, the, the cart would give a bit of a rattle, if nothing falls off, listen, fire a bit off, it's for her. The blessing of provision. And I wonder this morning, child of God, what provision has God blessed you with? I wonder this morning, has God revealed some blessing that he has <coughs> brought into your life that you have just discovered? A blessing this morning, child of God, that has been revealed to you. A blessing, perhaps, that has taken you by surprise. Many years ago, in the late 1850s, at the coal mines in Sheffield, a railway used to come out of the coal mines. The coal was delivered by train. As the coal left the Sheffield mines and the train, it used to be banked up in the cart, and as it crossed over the lines, much coal fell off the side of the, of the, of the wagon, and used to pass by a wee row of poor cottages where the poor people lived. There were widows that lived there. As soon as the train passed, the widows were out with their buckets gathering the loose coal to keep themselves warm. This went on for years. But the person who owned the colliery saw all that what was going on. But do you know the chains, the wagons, and the wagons were covered? Nothing fell out for them anymore. The owner of the colliery saw what was going on. And every Monday morning before the sun rose, a bag of coal was left for each home. And none of them homes knew where it came from or who had sent it. They woke up in the morning every Monday morning for years and the bag of coal was there for them. Child of God this morning, the goodness and the kindness of God to you and to me as seen in the person of Boaz is so great so undeserved, 
so unexpected. You know, Ruth, she was never in this field before. And it was in this field where she received the blessing. And it certainly was no accident that she was there. And listen, child of God, maybe the Lord this morning is controlling your life. And his hand is leading you into some particular field for you to serve him. Our heavenly Boaz, your heavenly Boaz, is maybe perhaps working in your life and planning things out going on in your life to bring you into some field of service and has left for you a handful of purpose, maybe of ability or gift to serve him in some small way or another. And maybe the Lord is working you in your life and calling you into a field of service that you never served before. But the Lord wants you into that field this morning to serve. And that's between you and the Lord this morning as to find that out as to what he wants to do with your life. God provides. God never calls a person into service without equipping them, without giving them the handfuls of purpose so he can fulfill that. God never called me into the pastor to leave me alone. Friend, every morning, every Monday morning, I go back into the study and I have to get down before the Lord, seeking the Lord's message for the next Thursday morning. And friend, I can tell you, there's never been a week that the handful of purpose wasn't left out for me. The blessings of, per the blessings of provision. But look at again the text because it was a blessing of purpose that she may glean them. They were to serve for a purpose. Do you know, child of God, God does move in mysterious ways. The blessing that she received was beginning, as you and I know the story well, it begins to unfold before us. This blessing this morning was to serve a great purpose. The pieces of the jigsaw, as we can see them, comes together for the, for the sole purpose. God was working his plan out. Listen this morning, child of God. With God, there's no accidents. You remember that? With God, there is no accidents, only incidents. Incidents that God brings in to work out his purpose for your life and me. wonder what blessing this morning. I wonder what handful of purpose the Lord has dropped into your life. I wonder what handful of purpose the Lord has left for you to glean so that you can serve him, that you can serve him so that you can glorify him. Listen this morning. The enemy doesn't attack your provision. He always attacks your purpose because the purpose is to glorify the Lord. But you know, child of God, this morning, as we look at Ruth's story, the blessing of providence, the blessing of provision led to the blessing of purpose because the whole jigsaw puzzle that God was bringing together was to bring Ruth into line concerning the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Friend, it's God this morning. It's God's hand that always wears the glove of history. God fulfills. God brings about his purposes for every life. I'm going to finish with Ruth's blessing. I want you to notice this this morning. Look at verse number, number 17. So she gleaned in the field unto leaven, and beat out that she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. Now look at this wee bit. And she took it up. She took it up. 
Will you notice her position? She's gleaning, she's down low, she's bent down low, she's close to the ground. That's how you glean, you know. In order for Ruth to receive the blessing this morning that was left for her, she had to get down low to receive it. It says she took it up. In order for Ruth to take it up, she had to get down low to retrieve it. A humble mind, a humble heart, a humble soul, a humble life will not always see, but will always appreciate the blessing that God has for them. Too many of God's people are filled with pride, self-importance, and they tramp on through the field of life unrecognizing the blessing that God has for them and that could have been there but they fail to recognize it and they fail to receive it because they weren't low enough to take it up. Ruth, as she labored, Ruth, as she served Boaz, never once asked for a blessing, never once asked for a thing, Boaz and all the grace that he could muster left for her that handful of purpose. Undeserved, left it for her. Child of God, let's all stay low this morning. Let's all focus this morning on the goodness and kindness of God. And by our humility, let us recognize, let us retrieve all the blessings that God has for us as we seek to serve Him in this field known as the day of grace. My God shall supply all your need. The day may be dark today, but tomorrow God's hand will be seen. With God, the dark days of life belong as much to Him, and He controls the dark days just as much as the bright day to bring you and I into that place where we can serve him and fulfill his purpose for us. May you this morning please and let me as well let us really look out for the blessings that comes from the goodness and the kindness of God. May God bless his word.